have an automated bridge system. Um, what the system does is it raises and lowers the drawbridge. It also uses sonar sensor to detect cars and boats to limit when the bridge moves for safety reasons. It's all controlled by this one button here. The operator needs to hold the button for one second for the thing to operate. So let's say we had a boat and no cars. The operator would push the button for one second. These LED lights flash. Go down to prevent cars The bridge then waits 11 seconds for the boat to pass under. The ultrasonic sensor will detect the boat if it is there and delay that. Seconds. After that, uh, the drawbridge goes down and the arms come up. So in this example, we have our little car. So the car is going to be on the bridge. The operator then pushes the button. And the lights flash, but the bridge will not raise until that car moves off the bridge. Then it will wait one second. So we have it now in the boat. We move the boat, and it's still under the bridge at the end of 11 seconds. It's going to wait until that boat moves after its 11 second period. So the boat moves on, and the bridge goes down. Then the arms raise, and cars can now cross. Decoding for the robot bridge that you just saw. First we have all our fragment commands. What they do is they link the actual sensors and motors to the cortex. As you can see we have on port 11 the sonar that you saw that detected boats and cars. And below that you have the limit down switch. That switch was hit when the bridge was in the down position. Limit up is the same thing except when it's in the up position. The button was what we used to control the bridge itself the red LEDs that you saw flashing. We have two motors. We have the bridge motor and a safety bars motor. So if we get into the main commands, you can see that we first have a while one equals one statement in the task main. What that'll do is that'll make this program infinitely loop until one of the following if statements are selected. For our first if statement, you'll see that if the sensor value for the button is pushed and the sensor value for the limit down is indicated, then the LEDs will turn on and off. This will not raise the bridge, however, because it fails to recognize whether a car is on the bridge or not. The second if statement shows that if the button is pushed and the limit down is pushed, so the bridge is down, and the sensor value is greater than 29, the bridge will then rise and flash its LED lights. The way that this works is the sonar reads the distance from the sonar to the bridge. If there were to be a car on the bridge, the sensor value would equal less than 29 because the bridge is exactly 29 centimeters away from the sensor. Though when the car leaves, the sensor value is greater than 29, the bridge will then race. To get the bridge back down, we have an if statement that says if the bridge is up and the sonar is greater than 38, the bridge will then lower, blink LEDs, and raise the bars. So how the sonar works is when the, the water level is at level 39. If there was a boat there, the sensor value would read less because there's something between the water and the sensor, thus making it less than 38 and not allowing the bridge to go back down. When the boat moves, the sensor value will read 39 again and lower the bridge. For safety purposes, we added an if statement so that if the limit down switch was not pushed, it would blink the LEDs. The only way for the limit down switch to not be pushed would be for the bridge to be either raised or for somehow the bridge to raise on its own without the program.